Prakash, I am a PhD student at the Indian Institute of Science and the title of my talk is Evaluation of Codes with Inherent Double Replication for Hadoop. So, this is joint work with people at IIC and Aneta and, uh, and of this Lalita and Vijay Kumar are there in the audience now. So, do catch up with them if you have more to know about this. So, I would like to thank first of all the conference organizers for having me uh, supply this uh, travel grant uh, that has actually allowed me to come over here. Okay, I will start with an overview of the talk. So, this talk is about Hadoop and we all know that in Hadoop we will commonly employ a triple replication for data storage. And this has two important advantages. The first advantage is that it gives you good data availability for map reduced computation. It also ensures good resiliency to note failures. But however, this has a big downside which is that it has huge storage overhead. In comparison, if in Hadoop you had only two copies of each block, you will save substantially on the storage overhead. And because there is a copy, it will also have good amount of data availability at least at moderate workloads. So, this talk is going to be about Hadoop systems that are only two copies of data blocks. But an issue in having only two copies is that it does not have the required resiliency to node erasures. But that can be easily addressed by adding some extra parities or extra checksums. So, in this talk we will talk about erasure codes uh, which have two copies and which will add extra parities to the uh, two copies in order to ensure resiliency. So, let us start with a very simple scheme erasure coding scheme. The scheme in literature is called as rate plus m. So, in this example, uh, one second, it is not proper. Okay. So, in this example, uh, you have uh, nine So, in this example, you have nine blocks, they are replicated twice and P is just an XOR of these nine blocks and P itself is replicated for extra resiliency. And the scheme here uh, is commonly called as a 10 ninth rate plus M and this code has resiliency uh, same as standard Hadoop. So, the question that uh, is of interest to us is can you come up with other erasure coding schemes that can outperform this kind of schemes. So, that is where we have our code which we call as the heptagon local code. This is a code with inherent double replication and this is how the code looks like. I do not think that it is a complicated code as we will see it is a very simple code. And uh, this code is going to encode data and store it across 15 nodes. So, if you ask me why we should even consider this code, this is the main reason. The point is that if so, this column is the overhead and this is the empty TDL or mean time to data loss. So, we are interested in ensuring an empty TDL which is at least that of standard Hadoop which is 3 rep. And if you see, if you employ the new code that I am telling here which is the heptagon local code, it will have improved storage overhead and improved MPTDL than the schemes based on rate plus M. Of course, it also has two copies of every block. So, this is the reason why we started with this code, but however, there is a catch. And the catch is relating to data locality for map reduced computations. So, let us understand what that is. So, in actually Hadoop, we have uh, we have things called map task assignment where if you have an MR job, uh, the job tracker is going to assign map tasks to all the available nodes. And in that assignment, two kinds of tasks can arise. The first task is called as a local task where the compute task is assigned to a node which contains a copy of the required block. Uh, for example, the node 1 is assigned a local task on block 1 and the next kind of task is what is called as a remote task where 
uh, you assign a task to a node which does not contain a copy of the required block, in which case it has to be copied from a distant node. So in this context, there is a terminology called as data locality, which is just the amount of tasks that are assigned locally. And it is well known in literature that if you increase data locality for the map task assignment, it directly results in improved job time and improved traffic in the whole system. So now let us come back to our code and understand the issue with our code, though it has improved storage overhead. So the issue is that when compared to RAID plus M based schemes, though both codes have two copies for every block, uh, the new code which is, H, which is HLC, uh, it will have reduced data locality for map task assignment. We will see the reason for this shortly. And one way this can be overcome is that uh, you only implement this code in systems which have large number of CPU cores per node. So if you implement these codes in, uh, in a Hadoop systems which have, let's say, actually eight map slots per node, then these codes don't tend to have that much of a loss. But uh, actually, however, that is a, a limitation. If you want to implement these codes in actually existing Hadoop systems. But that's not all. You can actually alter Hadoop in a slight way so that this issue is altogether eliminated. So if you are ready to encode in Hadoop across various uh, files, then this, as we will uh, see in this talk, uh, this issue of data locality that uh, actually appears with these codes does not arise at all. But of course, that's not part of this work, that is only work which we are doing. Okay, so now let's do the actual details of the talk. So let's first start with the description of the code itself. So the code we are interested in is called the heptagon local code. And uh, this erasure code is built on top of another erasure code called the heptagon code, which itself is an extension of another code called the Pentagon code. And uh, these codes are all examples of uh, families of codes called as regenerating codes or locally repairable codes. For instance, both the Pentagon code and the Heptagon code are examples of regenerating codes and the Heptagon local code is an example of a locally repairable code. And uh, these codes are recently advocated with the specific aim of actually efficient storage for the distributed storage systems. So we will first start with an explanation of this code, then see how that can be extended to the heptagon code, and then we will finally come to the heptagon local code. So the first code, the pentagon code. So this code itself is an example of a code with inherent double replication. And this is going to encode nine data blocks into 20 blocks, but store them only in five nodes. So each node is going to store four blocks. Five times four is 20. So let's see how that is done. So these are the nine blocks. These are the input for your code. Uh, you're going to first add a 10th block P, which is just a parity of all these nine blocks. It can be just the XOR of these nine blocks. Then let N1 to N5 denote the target five nodes, five target nodes, okay? And the way we are going to populate these nodes is as follows. Just assume that all these nodes are completely connected. So there will be five choose to 10 edges. Place each of these 10 blocks on a distinct edge of this graph. Then each node is going to store all those blocks that lie on the edges that are incident onto a node. For instance, if I see first node N1, it's going to store the blocks 1, 2, 3, and 4 because they are, lie on the edges that are actually incident on N1. Likewise, all the other nodes, you see, so if you see this population, uh, every block actually appears exactly in two nodes. All right. 
And if you see this code, and if you just go back to our earlier code that we described, which is a 10 night rate plus m, you see that both codes encode 9 blocks into 20 blocks uh, with the same parity p, but with the difference that in the rate plus m code, you would have kept all these 20 blocks in 20 distinct nodes in the context of Hadoop, but here they're going to put these 20 blocks only in five nodes. So there's a compact rearrangement of these 20 blocks into five nodes, and this rearrangement is essentially the reason for the advantages and disadvantages of this code. Okay, so let's come to the part where uh, we understand the resiliency of this code. So this code can actually tolerate uh, any two node erasures. So let's see how that works. Let's assume that the first node and the fifth node have gotten erased, and we would like to recover them. First point is to observe that apart from the block which is in common between the nodes 5 and 1, all of the blocks have a copy in the other remaining nodes. So they can all be just copied. And because there is a parity, you can just recover one with the help of this parity. So that way we see that this code can tolerate any two out of five node erasures. Okay. And this construction that we told here can be extended to polygon of any size. And here I have shown an extension to uh, uh, um, the case where you have seven nodes. So both the encoding and the repair operations are exactly same as what we saw in the case of the pentagon code. So for instance, in the heptagon code, uh, you will have seven nodes with each node storing six blocks each. Uh, and it's going to encode actually 20 blocks into a total of 42 blocks. Okay, so the reason why we are interested in actually extending this construction is that if you, ex if you have increase the a number of nodes, you are going to, you are going to actually increase the storage, I mean, you are going to actually uh, decrease the storage overhead of this code. So this code has an overhead of 20 upon 9, whereas this code has an overhead of only 42 upon 20, which is less than this. But the drawback is that the resiliency of this code is less than that of this code, because both these codes can tolerate only two node erasures, and this code can tolerate 2 out of 5, but this can only tolerate 2 out of 7, and that is quite bad. So th that's where we come to the third code, which is the heptagon local code. And this code can be thought of as a very simple way to improve the resiliency of the heptagon code at a slight increase in the overhead. And that is done with the concept called as global parities. So uh, let's see how that is done. You're going to take two instances of the heptagon code, where each heptagon is going to encode 20 data blocks. You ensure that these two heptagons don't have any node in common. And then, so there are totally 40 blocks that are actually being encoded here. And after that, you're going to take another node, 15th node, and you're going to add two parity blocks there, where there are parities of all the 40 blocks. So this parity block is going to be used for the cases where you have the three erasures inside the heptagon. And so let us see how actually erasures can be tolerated in this new code. So for instance, if there are only two erasures inside a heptagon, because we already know that this heptagon itself can tolerate any two known erasures, recovery can happen locally. But however, if there is a third node which also goes down inside the heptagon, then the recovery is going to take place with the help of this extra parities that we compute and the other heptagon. So that is the idea behind this code and that is the way we increase the <coughs> resiliency of the code at, at a slight increase in overhead of these extra parities. Okay, 
So let us come to a comparison of actually overhead versus resiliency of all these codes. Uh, so this uh, we, uh, we have already seen a part of this table earlier that is okay we will see it again. So the idea is to construct only those codes whose MTT DL is at least that of standard Hadoop which is 3 rep. So in that sense I have shown you a 10, 9 rate plus m and also 12, 9, 12, 11 rate plus m. So the point is that 10, 9 rate plus m will have an overhead of 2.22 while 12, 11 will improve upon the 2.18 but its MTT DL is going to fall less than that of standard Hadoop. So this is actually unacceptable. So in that sense if you see our new code which is a heptagon local code uh, outperforms codes based on rate plus m. So that is the reason why we say these codes can be considered in Hadoop. Okay, so that was the advantage part of this code. Let us come back to the uh, part where we said that these codes actually have an issue which is that of data locality. So the point is to observe that uh, as we told earlier these codes are going to concentrate their data in a fewer number of nodes and that concentration is going to adversely affect uh, data locality uh, if this co if you start map reduce jobs on these uh, encoded files. For, for instance if you assume that if you have a file which is encoded in the form of this heptagon and if you assume that uh, you start an MR job on it and also assume that each node can do two parallel map slots. So you see there are totally seven nodes and two map slots imply that at most 14 tasks can be started as local task. But this code has a total of 20 blocks so you need a total of 20 tasks which mean that the remaining six have to be started as remote tasks. So the six comes because of the fact that there is extreme concentration of these 20 blocks inside the seven nodes uh, and that is the reason why the data locality of these codes are bad. So in general the rate plus m code will have improved data locality than the heptagon local code. So we have actually implemented these codes in Hadoop to see how this loss in data locality affects map reduced time. So in fact our implementation is on top of HDFS RAID where HDFS RAID is Facebook's open source implementation of Reed Solomon codes over HDFS and we con conduct experiments on two configurations where the first configuration uh, is decided to have two uh, map slots per node and it has 25 nodes and the next configuration has four map slots per node and but it has only 10 nodes in the system. So in the first configuration we test both the pentagon and the heptagon local code while in the next configuration we have actually only come so far as to test the pentagon code. So these are the experimental curves that we have gotten. So if you see the, the top curves are for the case when you have two map slots per node and the extreme right curve is the data locality that is experimentally observed. So the x axis is the load injected in the experiment and these are for bad jobs. So by a bad job I imply that you start a job, you let the job complete and you start the next job. So load uh, I imply that uh, is a ratio of the number of map tasks requested by the job to the maximum number of map tasks that is available in the whole system. So if you increase the load as we, uh, the locality is actually expected to fall but if you see the top curve is for standard Hadoop which is a 3 rep and this curve is for just a double replicated Hadoop but in comparison if you see this new codes though they have double replication they do not have that much availability because of the concentration of data and that lack of constant that lack of data locality directly implies and imp and uh, uh, directly implies that your both your job time and the data traffic 
is quite high if you have only two map slots per node. But actually, however, if you increase it to four <coughs> map slots per node, the extra number of map slots actually help to compensate for the fact that there is a concentration uh, of data because of these codes. So if you see here, we have actually tested the Pentagon code and with four map slots per node, the data loss, I mean the loss in data locality is not too high, which implies that if you see that the data the traffic seen in the job, that is almost same as standard tour. Okay, so in summary, uh, we have discussed a new coding scheme called the heptagon local code, which has inherent double replication uh, of uh, data um, and actually, but and this code enjoys the advantages that it has good overhead and resilience even compared to other schemes like rate plus m, but however, if you are going to implement these codes in standard Hadoop, then if you need good data locality, you will need a larger number of CPU cores than the, what is needed by rate plus m. So that is where we come to our ongoing work, where we say that uh, instead of encoding uh, just one file, you actually encode across various files. So if you can do that, uh, we see that this issue of loss of data locality is, is altogether eliminated. So uh, for example, <laughs> this is the heptagon local code that we saw earlier and we told that this code is going to encode 40 blocks of data and by this I imply that these 40 blocks have to be picked from 40 distinct files. So if you can do that, this issue that is there, uh, that I mean this issue that we saw, saw earlier, that will not be there anymore. Okay, so this is some related work in, in implementation of codes for distributed storage. So locally repairable codes have been implemented uh, in actually Hadoop and Azure by actually Satyam Murthy and, and Cheng Hua. Regenerating codes have been implemented for uh, distributed storage systems by Hu et al. and Runhi Lee et al. There have also been actually other implementation of uh, improved with Solomon codes uh, which have been implemented and studied and all these codes have been studied in the context of uh, improving uh, the, the node repair bandwidth and uh, we and uh, these codes all of them have actually only a single copy of data, data and uh, as such uh, in the context of actually Hadoop they are actually ideal for cold data storage while actually our code was for more practically hot data storage. Thank you. I was wondering if there was any uh, application of fountain codes to this, or do they suffer the same problem of only storing one copy of a block? Oh, uh, I don't think I'm actually aware of uh, any such applications. Uh, I mean, do you imply that application of fountain codes to to the storage? No, these these codes are very short length codes, right? So you're. Fountain codes are very large length. 
So probably that is one reason why you can't employ them in, in storage. 